what what percentage of people that you work with are um, coming with an injury and and therefore in need of rehabilitation where you're now applying DNS to presumably go back to, hey, this is where the breakdown was. Let's go back to where that breakdown would have occurred developmentally and go back and rebuild those steps. So we're going to, you're going to learn how to stabilize your neck or stabilize your head using the stabilizing muscles appropriately. You're going to learn how to generate concentric intra-abdominal pressure, and you're going to learn how to centrate ipsilaterally and contralaterally and all of these things. And then what percentage of your uh, patients are not coming with an injury, but are coming for performance enhancement and saying, you know, I just can't throw this fastball any faster than 89 miles per hour. And the only way I'm going to get that faster is if I can create a better whip between my right hand and my left leg and hip, you know, so those are two ends of the spectrum. And how do you spend your time on those? Right. So a majority of people are coming to me because pain and, and injury, uh, what happens, especially with the athletes, once we address that, once we calm down, whether it's, if it's an acute or a chronic injury, we calm, we decrease pain and, um, uh, and utilize the, the, there's different manual methods within DNS and then integrating the exercises that are based off of those developmental milestones. Once they get to a certain point, um, ideally I'm going to work with a trainer or with the coach and hopefully they're on the same, you know, mindset so that, uh, they can then progress to the strength training, to the, the specific technique more and more these athletes are, you know, it's a combination of once they're out of pain, uh, we work with the quality of stabilization and movement and transfer of force and load. Um, the, let's the, take a group of, let's say a hundred athletes who come to you in pain. Again, just looking for rough numbers. What percentage of them will buy into the thesis of this very non-traditional way of rehabilitating is going to help? What percentage of that what, what, of that hundred will stay with the program to get better? Right, not enough. So what's the number? So uh, 10, 20% maybe. That's it. Yeah. What I see happening, you know, for example, uh, Major League Baseball is integrating DNS more and more. So um, in San Diego with the Padres, I've started to consult with them a bit. Um, there's a, a hitting coach uh, for the Dodgers that comes in and we kind of workshop ideas uh, where, you know, he's integrating the DNS concepts and principles. So it's starting to get recognized more for that value as far as uh, the performance enhancement aspects of it. Culturally within sport, what I see, um, especially in the West, there's, you know, they want numbers. They want okay what's their p what's their lift you know what's their their strength capacity which is important but i think it's also important to uh, again like integrate those two the quality of movement and stability and then uh increasing that you know their their strength thresholds but even just with an injury so if you let's just say 100 athletes that are you know let's say gymnasts and hockey players and football players that come in with lower back pain you're saying only 20 of those would stick with the program until they got better. Uh, uh, 80 of them would abandon the program before they improved. Um, a lot of times and in, in just across the patient population, a lot of times once, once people are out of pain, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. They go back, they go back into their, their oh, patterns. Sorry. That, that's yeah. what I'm trying to differentiate, yeah. which is how many of them just stick with it long enough to get out of pain. The next question I'm going to ask is, once out of pain, how many of them stick with the program and switch basically from rehab to prehab? Um, so going back to that, one of my goals, especially with the athlete, once they're out of pain, we develop a uh, prehabilitation kind of 
kind of program and we utilize those again the going back to the knowledge of developmental kinesiology and developmental milestones which uh, later we'll, we'll actually go through so based on what i'm seeing with their insufficiencies and with with the insufficiency of that coordination of stabilization i will give them certain things certain sequences of movements and exercises that they practice uh, with awareness to facilitate better strategy for stability and then that's part of their movement preparation or prehabilitation before whether it's their strength training or their technique training or going out and and performing and um so that's that's a larger percentage because that's part of what I kind of program into the, the rehabilitation. Um, so some athletes will get that and they're okay, great. This is, this is good. I'm going to go do it. And then occasionally they're coming back and getting, uh, maybe we're adding to it based on what, how they're functioning now. Um, other athletes, they want more and that's that, that's that smaller percentage part of it too probably access you know and availability um uh as far as being able to be you know in san diego and working one-on-one -on -one with me so um you know there's there's different factors that will um tie into how much they're they're doing but within the whole treatment protocol or rehabilitation protocol, I'm giving them things that they should then in integrate into their programs. This podcast is for general informational purposes only. and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit Peter Atia, MD dot com forward slash about where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.